visit in my former parish died. She was 95 years old and she had quite a journey. She grew up in the South, Alabama. And of course this was the segregated South. And she remembers walking to school, of course a segregated school, and being called a name that I will not repeat here. And she remembers seeing a crossbow and scary men in white robes and hood walk by her village. She walked quite the road in her life, Dorothy did. And now she has walked home to be with her Lord. This is an interesting gospel reading this one of Jesus' journey in the wilderness for 40 days. That number should be significant, this 40 days exile in the wilderness. How many days was the earth flooded in the time of Noah? 40 days. How many years did the people of Israel wander the wilderness? 40 years. And so 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness. In terms of our chronology here, he was just baptized. The Spirit of God came out, came, came down to the waters, descending on him like a dove, said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now, get out there into the wilderness. And that's what the Spirit did. The Spirit of God descended upon Jesus, This is my beloved Son, and then led him in to the wilderness. And it is in this wilderness that we find ourselves today. How many of you are in a wilderness now? We've been praying most every week for Denise. Denise, you are in a wilderness. A wilderness dealing with cancer. And it is tough to be in that wilderness because the wilderness brings uncertainty. The wilderness brings pain and fear. The wilderness means that from time to time, you're not at home. Today in church, we will be praying for Bob Young. Bob is in the hospital. And Sue, right now, you're in the wilderness. Later during prayer time, and I'll just let you all know this. We're going to be gathering around soon, and we will be laying hands on you, and we will be praying for you. And it is tough to be in that wilderness because the one whom you love, who you are so close to, isn't with you at your side right now. And there's nothing more that you'd like to do in this moment here and here in church is to rest your head on his shoulder and to know that you've got him and he's got you. But this is what the wilderness does. The wilderness takes us away from the ones that we love. The wilderness takes us away from the places that make us feel at home, that make us feel comfortable. The wilderness removes us from our happiness. And sometimes we think, as we walk through the wilderness, that we've even been removed from the presence of God. Note when the devil is tempting Jesus. It's not when things are going good. It's not when things are going great. It's not during the Sermon on the Mount when he is gathered by uh, thousands and thousands of people around him. It's not when he's feeding the multitude. It's not when he's healing the sick. The devil gets at him 
when he's at his lowest. The devil gets at him when he's in the wilderness. The devil is tempting him with demonic food, with devil worship, even with taking his own life before his time. The devil knows us in our weakness. The devil knows exactly which buttons to push, which temptations to spring upon us. The devil sees us when we're faced with a tough test in school. I remember one time, and this was even during a Bible test in fifth grade Bible class, when I didn't have my work memory. But I had the palm of a hand that I could sneak and look at. When we are afraid, the devil gets us. When we're in pain, the devil gets us. When we're in the wilderness, the devil wants nothing more than to come at us and to take our gaze off the cross and onto ourselves, onto something else. And so also Jesus. And by the way, if the devil thinks that he can get a go at Jesus, how much shall you or me? And so that's where we find ourselves, in the wilderness. Some of you are in a wilderness of health issues. We've spoken of that. Others of you are in a wilderness of mourning. You've lost a husband or a wife. And you're wondering... Will life ever be the same again? Others of you are in the wilderness of loneliness, of isolation, maybe of temptation. You've got a pet sin, something that you struggle with, and in those moments of weakness that we all go through, you are more susceptible for your eyes to go to places online where they ought not go, for your mouth to open and speak negatively of someone around you. When you're in the wilderness, the devil gets you. When you're in the wilderness, the devil seeks you out. Because when you're in the wilderness, when you're hungry, when you're without food, when you're without sustenance, when you're without a roof over your head or a home, that's when you're the most vulnerable. Food for the wilderness. Contained with the kids, God doesn't leave us without food for 40 days. God very rarely leaves people without shelter for 40 days, although we know even in Dunkirk there are people who are homeless. But we still go through wilderness nonetheless. How are we prepared? How do we endure that wilderness? You know, if you remember, when did Jesus go into the wilderness? It was right after he was baptized. And certainly it might be way more than 40 years since you've been baptized, but God's water still works. God's gift is still there. The Holy Spirit still dwells within you. God with us. That's the meaning of Emmanuel. God with you, even through the wilderness. God gives you a divine heaven-sent food. It's a shame we're not receiving Holy Communion this day because it would be a perfect lesson there. Do you remember what I say as I dismiss each rail for communion? Depart in peace, for you do not go alone. Depart in peace, go back out into the wilderness because sometimes God has a task for us to do there. But you're not alone. You're not alone as you walk through the wilderness. You're not alone as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. For God is with you. His rod and his staff comforts you as you go up to Roswell and get negative results. As you go up into the city of Buffalo later today to see your beloved, to hold him, and to be with him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. They comfort me as we walk in fear and in anguish and in pain. They comfort us as we go through the wilderness. The journey 
seems long. Forty days is a long time in the wilderness. But for some here, it's been much longer. Sometimes we're meant to endure a season in the wilderness. But other times we stay there because it feels comfortable. Because it's all we've come to know. My grandmother lost her husband in the year 2000 mourned him very strongly until she died in 2021. 21 years in the wilderness. And those who have lost their husbands or their wives, they will mourn and they will mourn perhaps for decades. But in the midst of your mourning, God calls you home. In the midst of the wilderness, God still calls you to look for him. To look for how he nourishes you, how he strengthens you, how he sustains you, even as you walk through that wilderness. Our closing hymn this day will be one of my favorites, On Eagle's Wings. You're going to see me cry. Because that is the funeral, that is the funeral hymn in my family. Think of the words. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will bring you no fear. Upon his wings he will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. That's coming right from our gospel reading, by the way. That's why I selected that hymn. The words are from how the devil responds, how Jesus responds to the devil, I should say. Let those be your words too. Because the devil wants to get us when we're in the wilderness. Tell him with the same voice as Jesus tells the devil, Be gone, Satan! Be gone from my life! I've got someone on my side who is so much more powerful than you. His name is Jesus Christ. He will never let me go. He will never let me down. His love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. I am his and he is mine and he will never let me go. Be gone, Satan, from my life. You can do me no harm even as I walk through the wilderness. For God has filled me up with good things. His son's body and blood with the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. And I am never alone. And I will never be alone. For thou art with me, now and forever, bringing me the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, and bringing me to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord.